All right, and I'll start with our prayer of connection uh, first. So very gently close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Dear Mother, Father, God, divine, infinite spirit, source of all that is, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together on Easter Sunday for another Reiki share. And we encompass all the people that are normally part of this, but may have had other obligations. We thank you for the assistance of the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, the Reiki masters, but most especially Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, Saint Francis, Saint Germain, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Michael, the Blessed Mother, the Divine Feminine, Mary Magdalene, Moses, Metatron, Melchizedek, Mohammed, and Kuan Yin. We ask to be cleared, centered, aligned, balanced, and grounded. And that whatever come in for each of us, come in for our highest good. We also ask to be a clear channel of light for Metatron and his healing angels so that we each receive the highest vibrations of light possible. We also ask for the assistance of the great race, the lords and masters of the race, and the archangels of the race. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the name of I am. And this morning, when I did my meditation in preparation for today's Reiki share, uh, I had asked what it is that I'm supposed to bring forward. And the same thought came to me that actually started formulating in my mind about a week ago. And so it was the risen Christ. And uh, there's uh, a few messages that I want to share with you um, that don't necessarily... Uh, I, I guess, come from Christ, but sometimes also from another party. First of all, as you do this meditation, visualize the glorified body of Christ, the, the, the Christ that is illuminated with nothing but light radiating from him in every direction, because that is symbolic of the light that you are, the light that you came from, the light that you go back to. This is a brief little sojourn. It's a brief little journey. It's we don a spacesuit called our bodies and we come through the birth canal and we agree to have the experiences that we set out for ourselves while we're still in spirit. And as we do that, we have a fortitude along the way to help us with whatever it is that we set out for ourselves, whatever it is that, that we came here to do our guides are going to be there, bolstering us up, strengthening our resolve. And so effectively, the, the message from the risen Christ is that, um, first of all, the message that he wanted me to bring forth, first and foremost, uh, and if you, if, uh, uh, is that the lesson from the crucifixion was that it didn't matter how they mutilated his body. They couldn't kill him. They absolutely could not kill him because of the fact that we are not our body. We do not have 
the restrictions of just this part of ourselves as uh, as a limitation to who we really are. So effectively, the 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 message of the um, the tomb when Mary Magdalene came in was that I uh, am not there. My garments are there, the garments I cast off, the garments that they shrouded me in, but I am not there. The essential I am a piece of God, an enlightened being. And this is the image that I want you to carry forth from during during the uh, meditation this morning. Um, the first time, I just wanted to say one more thing before I start. Uh, the first time I heard this concept, I was horrified. I thought this, oh my God, I don't understand where this gal is coming from. And yet it was coming from a friend of mine who studied A Course in Miracles from the same time I studied it. And she said that basically Jesus did not die on the cross. He effectively knew how to change his vibrations and elevate himself into a higher vibration. So it looked like he died. And when they put him into, when they bombed him, embalmed him and put him into the, um, uh, uh, every, uh, you know, into the sepulcher, uh, that for all intents and purposes, he was dead. But effectively, all he did was retreat into his light body. And this was validated by the, um, the book, Anna, Grandmother of Jesus, which is uh, channeled by Claire Hartsong. And she basically said that in, in the years that Jesus was sent overseas. He was sent to India, he was sent to China, he was sent to, uh, to Egypt to study the sacred mysteries of the Buddhists, the Hindu, the Egyptians. Um, he learned how to transmute his energy into light and back again. And so they had an experience, he had an experience of lying three days in, the, in a sepulcher. And I think until the 60s, the Egyptian government allowed ordinary people to do that. And then they discovered that they would come back and occasionally that person would be dead. So once that happened, they, they, they stopped allowing that. So, but anyway, that's, that's what I was gonna share with you today. And so very gently close your eyes Take a deep breath in, exhale, and visualize the white light of the risen Christ, the brilliant light that accompanies his body as he comes out of the sepulcher that he has been laid in. The tomb that was hewn out of rock by Joseph of Arimathea. And visualize the body of Christ, the intense white light that is who he is on Easter Sunday and recognize that he is now overlighting you and he is going to move from chakra to chakra, starting with the crown. Take a deep breath in and exhale. And in the crown chakra, the white light of Christ 
seeps into every single cell of your thousand petal lotus. That part of you that is the connection between you and God. As well as every cell in your body and see that white light moving down through you. And now we are going to move the overlighting white light of Christ into our third eye, into our pineal gland, into our pituitary gland. This is the connection of your intuitive self. This is where you hear what God has to say to you. And God uses many messengers. He might use a radio on us and in terms of a song that has a special message for you. He might choose a statement from a television program. He might choose a specific license plate that goes zooming by you or numbers that you continue to notice that are trailing you and following you Because when the same numbers appear, you notice them. He might choose a remark from a friend. Could be an enemy. Could be somebody you've been having difficulties with. God chooses many ways to reach you.
And now we move into the throat, the receptor of God's will. Since we are a little piece of God having a human experience, we start to understand that God's will is our will. And we have our throat as the center of the divine truth of who we are. It is through our throat that the white light of the risen Christ illuminates and sends out the vibrations of his light, his love, his being. And we see the Christ light effectively overlight our throat. And we understand that. We do not have to perceive it as difficult to align with God's will. We can accept it as our own will. And we move the overlighting light of Christ, the risen Christ, into our fourth chakra, our heart. And as the overlighting Christ moves into our heart, we expand our heart into our Mother Earth. But especially, we send that light into the hot spots of the Earth, into the areas of discord, of conflict, of war, of lack. And we ask that the overlighting light of the risen Christ 
illuminate all the people involved in those conflicts. And we visualize the promised peace, thousand years of peace that has been promised us on this planet. And we visualize the harmony of all men accepting one another without restriction, without any type of false claims to ownership or possession that does not belong to them. And we visualize the earth as pristine and clean and safe for animal, vegetable, mineral, and human. And we ask that the white ray that emanates from the heart of the risen Christ cleanse and beautify and harmonize and balance every single facet of what is available to us on the planet so that there is no lack, no want, no need.
and we take the white light of Christ combined with the light from our heart and we expand it into the cosmos. We expand it into the universe. We expand it into all the places where new stars are being born, all the nebulae, all the billions of galaxies that contain billions of planets as well as stars, billions of places where other beings can exist. And we ask the same unity, the same harmony, the same balance, the same peace that we seek for our planet to also encompass the cosmos. And now we move and ask the white light of the risen Christ to move into our solar plexus. And we expand and watch as the white light of Christ harmonizes with us and eliminates us and becomes regenerative and restorative of our solar plexus, our personal will. And how the white light of Christ eliminates any type of inadequacy that we might feel, any type of awkwardness, any type of littleness, any type of non-proficiency. And we watch and take the white light of the risen Christ and move it into our sacral, our seat of creation. But we stand next to the supreme creator. And we see that we are given the same tools as the Supreme Creator to create with thought, first and foremost. We create what we focus on. We create what we concentrate on. Fleeting thoughts are fleeting thoughts. They come, they go. But what it is that we give our 100% attention to and continue to think 
of bringing into form. That is what our journey of creation is. And alongside the creator stand our guides, our angels, our ascended masters, all aids from God to help us, to assist us with that which we wish to create, with that which we wish to bring forward. And now we see the white light of the living Christ, of the risen Christ, overlighting our cell with all our guides. and joining with the Supreme Creator in harmony and bringing forth what it is that we wish to bring forth. And now we move into the root chakra. This is our strength. This is our foundation. This is our safety. This is our security. And the white light of the risen Christ bolsters and makes all that possible for us because we know that nothing is impossible. In fact, in the word impossible is the word I am possible. And we accept this type of sureness, assuredness for ourselves. We accept the I am presence of the risen Christ, the white light of the risen Christ as our strength.
And now we take the white light of the risen Christ, move it into our earth star below our feet and bring it up to our soul star above our head. And we take the white light and smooth our auric field three times. And take the white light and seal our auric field three times with the sign of the infinity. We seal this beautiful Easter energy into our self. And we thank the angels, the archangels, the ascended masters, the Reiki masters, but especially the Elohim, Master Jesus, as the risen Christ and God for this opportunity to share in a Reiki share, for the opportunity to grow in our strength, our love, our understanding. We thank you all for attending and we say namaste. Amen. Thank you. And thank you all for being here. Um, I, I am really uh, appreciative of that. And Robin, I think we'll start with you. Well, I forgot to say, I'm glad you're feeling better and that you're here today. It's good to see thank you. you. Yeah, yesterday was a rough day. I, I woke up with vertigo and the room was literally spinning. And I slept till 2 p.m. So that some, somehow or other, something was off inside of me you know but glad you're back so you. i i was very nice and relaxing the only time for me that i got a little emotional was when it got into the heart area and maybe because we're talking about you know where the heart energy needs to go and and sort of reminding us of what's going on in the world and in the world okay <laughs> thank you thank you liz thank you Great, thank you, Alice, and happy Easter, everyone. Um, happy Easter. Really, very energizing. I felt, um, I felt it more in my solar uh, plexus, which probably means I have a little bit to clear there. And uh, just when you had the energy run up and down, all of a sudden I had this complete calm. Almost when you were about to say Namaste, I think I was almost about to doze off to sleep. It, but it went from being alert to then once the energy went through me, it was just this sense of calm. So, great. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Okay, Karen. Thank you, Alice. Yes, I feel so calm as well. And um, your voice is just so calming and soothing. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> and in the beginning, I all of a sudden, I just started draining my sinuses, but now they're a lot better. So thank you. Super. Thank you. Melvin. Happy Easter, everybody. Hello. Uh, I am always appreciative to have a spot to come and meet with like-minded individuals where two or more gathered and know that the energy is in the mist. And I always, it's like my uh, daily shower. And uh, I really got another layer of knowingness cause from childhood up until this moment, I've always heard about the sepulcher and the stone ro rolled away. But in, in the beginning, when you said it, the, the individual was not there, but the garments and shrouds are there, that, that was like a time bomb of knowledge for me. Like, because my child mind was always thinking the tomb was just completely empty. 
So that's also which grew into the thing of we as human in this physical realm go and celebrate an empty tomb because the individual is no longer in what we thought and and related to as that body. Yeah. So, you know, and that the process and the organ and and the forget my word, the stuff that we use to celebrate somebody body's uh physical departure that was the metaphor so i'll stop right there but that was like oh okay that was my light bulb moment but anyway all said happy easter and i enjoyed and as you can tell uh my cup overflowed and my salsa too so i'll stop right there <laughs> thank you thank you but uh truly the body the physical body wasn't there but the light body was you know there as it appeared to mary magdalene within a few minutes so uh, that's, that was the, uh, message. You, you are not your physical body and, uh, it doesn't matter how they mutilate you. They can't kill you because you're not your body. You know, they can't kill you. And because so many people, there are people walking this planet that have no conception of the fact that we continue to exist. They just don't have that there to them. We go into nothingness. What at the at our death, we we there's just nothingness, and that's not the case. And uh, recently, I I watched a thing on Patrick Swayze, and of course, one of the two movies that promoted him, Dirty Dancing, was shot him to stardom, but Ghost. And uh, I remember reading a review, a metaphysical review of Ghost, and they said. There were many things in Ghost that are exactly right. So if you want to see what happens in the afterlife, watch that movie again. It's on Netflix and, uh, or Amazon Prime. And uh, anyway, so uh, just, just see how it, it shows up for you. And anyway, but thank you. And I know Sherelle is back there. Uh, She's yes, oh, I'm here. Hi there. Hi, hi. hi are you here. you're still in Mexico, right? Yes, I am. Yay. <laughs> you're from thank you. I love you. I do. Um, but happy Easter, everyone. Alice, thank you so much. I am y'all can probably hear it. I was almost asleep. Um, so I just just basically just woke up. But that was so so good, just so cleansing, so so just fulfilling and everything that I needed. So thank you for that. And then also your point about um, what Melvin was just saying with like the light body and the physical body and all of that. I've been having a lot of conversations with people about um, just like, I guess, death and like mm -hmm. what happens after death. And I don't know why these conversations are coming up now, um, but that was just, kind of, I guess, confirmation of the truth that I know to be true. Um, and just sharing that with other people is is great. So yeah, thank you for that. That was Wonderful. perfect. Wonderful, thank you. And Julie is uh, back there. There she is. <laughs> Hi, Alice. Hi, everyone. Good, Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. How are you, Melvin? Hi. Hi, um, Robin. Um, uh, well, it, interestingly enough, I felt compelled to wear this color, <laughs> which wow. is white and yellow. And yeah. um, I, I was like, I have to wear this. So, um, well, it was, I just thought it was, uh, I, the word that's coming is magnificent. I mean, really powerful, very centering. It's kind of what I've been hearing um when i've meditated and you know have, have have been connecting with my guides so it was very powerful for me and i and very necessary for the world and for all of us to embrace this kind of energy and um it's interesting what Cher said that i've had more people that have not believed in god or spirituality they're good people just you know they've they've really turned away. And for some reason, you know, they've just been asking me all these questions and I've been trying to 
share, you know, the light really. And so it's interesting that other people are experiencing the same, same kind of thing happening. And I, I think the more that we can embody it, the more, you know, we can share it. Yeah. And, and uh, of course, one of the uh, things that's promoted by the Catholic Church is that you get one shot, you get one lifetime, you get one shot at this. And that's so wrong. Yeah, that is so wrong. The whole concept of incarnation, reincarnation is uh, they didn't want, because it's, again, it's a form of control. And they didn't want people to think, well, I can just come up you know, if I don't, you know, if I'm, I'm really uh, nasty in this lifetime, I can come around and be a saint in the next. Ah. Um, but again, they, th th the whole concept of one shot at it, I think that's why people revolt and say, you go into nothingness. I mean, that's at least that thought has gone through my head. So uh, it's, it's interesting, those of us who have been, uh, asked about well, what happens when we die what happens and uh then you come forth with the, the best explanation that you have and my explanation is always you go through this tunnel and that's called the valley of the shadow of death in psalm 50 uh, 23 and you go through the tunnel and at the end you see the light and and uh, I know when I work with souls who are trapped on this planet, I had a Civil War encampment in my front yard, a whole encampment. And periodically when I would come home, I would see soldiers, four of them, four in a row, um, the, just their, their ghostly shadows marching down my street. And they, they would kind of like stop in my cul-de-sac. They wouldn't come down my driveway. But then uh, my little uh, corgis, um, from the time I, br I brought a corgi home, uh, they'd come to the front door, they'd raise their head and they'd look up and they'd start barking like crazy. And I'd, I'd ask them, what are, you, what are you seeing? And I'd tune in to what it was that they were seeing. And I recognized that, oh my God, I've got, you know, a civil war encampment right here. So one by one, I sent them to the light simply by telling, you know, one at a time to turn until they saw the light and wow. then go towards the light, go towards the light because that light is the light of Christ. And as they, as they go to the light, that light comes towards them. And, and that light then embraces them. Christ puts his arm around them. That's, that's again, that's a visual, I, I, my understanding. So effectively, uh, you know, there are just people that are stuck on this planet, uh, trapped as ghosts because they're in, trapped in the astral plane. And those of us who are meant to have that experience, we have that experience with them. Uh, I know I didn't see the encampment until I tuned into what was happening, why my dogs were barking so furiously, and then periodically, uh, you know, watching as groups of a, a, a whole trail of soldiers would be marching. And I, I, the first time I saw it, I said, this is too perfect. I mean, they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're like marching, you know. And it's always four and four and four and four, you know, and uh, everything. So again, I tuned into them, but I haven't seen that in years. So I'm presuming they've all gone to the light. But the first time I had my, we had our porch put on the house after, a, uh, within the year after we moved in. And the first time I sat on my lounge, uh, every few minutes that, uh, well, it could have been even seconds that I was going to um, fall asleep, all of a sudden I jolt awake. And after this happened about four or five times, I recognized, hey, somebody is waking me up. You know, this isn't just happening. This is somebody waking me. And sure enough, I tuned into what I was, where I was and right below me in the very spot that I was laying at, right there was a young man in a dry well looking up at me. 
and he had been a Civil War soldier. He happened to step into a dry well, knocked him out. His platoon went on. They thought he deserted, but he died in that well. He had no one to rescue him. So I, I sent him to the light just with that very same thing. I said, just look up and watch as, as the light comes towards you. So I, I guess I'm telling you this because you, there are more than one of you who, uh, you know, who is listening to this is going to have the same experience because that's the only reason something comes forward for me, you know, to share it with you. So anyway, um, really interesting. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> My dog keeps seeing something and it's near her dog bowl and she won't eat. I actually have to stand around her and do Reiki. And I, I felt yesterday, I was like, I think there's something bothering her while she eats. So that might be why you, one of the reasons why you might have said that. Absolutely. But tune into it. Oh, Julie, ask, ask to be shown with, through your third eye what it is. That's your intuitive. That's your, you know, your set. Tune into it and just uh, say, you know, please show me what that is. It could be another dog. That's the first thing that flashed through my mind. Oh, wow. You know, that there is another dog competing for her food. I mean, because we've been, I've been baffled, you know, yeah. we, it doesn't make sense, but I took her outside and she could eat out there, but yeah. she won't in this one place. And I was like, yeah. what's going on? And she kept yeah. staring at something. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely do, do that, tune into it. And, and if you get the sense that something or somebody's in the room, um, again, instead of going into a fear space, tune into it and ask it to turn until it sees the light and move towards the light. That is, uh, is the simplest way of sending you know, people to spirit. So, turn into, you see the light and move into the light. Move into the light. Yeah, move towards the light because as they move towards the light, the, the light is going to move and you can watch them. You can watch them. And then uh, the, the when they merge with the light, it, it'll get smaller, 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 smaller until you know they've gone fully into spirit. Thank you. So, yeah, Thank you. very, very simple. Okay. All right, guys, have a lovely day and uh, happy Easter. And I'm glad, I'm so glad you were able to make it. <laughs> Thank you, Melvin. <laughs> we, it's always good Take to care. end on a laugh. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. Have a great right. day. Thank, Thank you, Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>